Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome once again to your lane talk show with your girl, Coach Trish Hannah. Thank you so much for joining us today. For those who are tuning in for the first time, your lane talk show was created to educate, encourage, and empower women of all ages. Listen, every single topic that you can think of, we have either covered it or will be covering by God's grace. When we discuss things, we discuss things um, that deals with, you know, um, every, I mean, taboo topics, every single thing, everything that you can think of. Um, we, we come from a holistic approach. So we're going to ensure that nothing is being left out when it comes to us as women, right? We want to make sure that you receive and apply as much knowledge from this particular show as possible so that we can become better spouses, better mothers, better sisters, better neighbors, better citizens, and better women in general. That's what we're here for. All right. Last week, Sunday, we covered the show with two courageous women. I mean, they teach just resilient, courageous. They came in and they testified about their past homosexual lifestyle um, and how they overcame. If you want to know more about or more about that show or tune in and listen to it um i would employ you to go ahead because you will be blessed by it um it's called overcoming homosexuality that is episode 49 that you can go on to youtube to look up coach trish hannah and type in overcoming homosexuality all right I employ you to call a friend tell them to tune into star 106.5 fm dial or channel 976 on cable or you can log on to Facebook on your Lane Life Coaching Facebook page to watch us live. Um, and when you do, please like and subscribe for those who are tuning in to the YouTube page. And then for those on Facebook, please share and tag a friend. The purpose for this particular show is to just help those and remind others about the importance of taking care, proper care of their pets. Now, let me explain something to you. Yes, um, last week, Sunday, Tony laughed at me. He's like, Trish, this is a women's talk show. How do you get talking about pets? Listen, 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 listen. Pets are family too, okay? That's our little for babies, all right? When something is wrong with them or, God forbid, they pass away, that hurting us. We are, we, that impacts us tremendously. It impacts the way that we parent. Um, it impacts the way that we are as wives. I don't care what nobody say. So I had to bring this in. I had to bring this in here. Unless I have a coworker who's, who took at least two weeks off grieving because her pit bull passed away. All right. That was her baby. All right. And she just, and I, I couldn't blame her. You know, I tried to comfort her, as much, comfort her as much as I possibly can because I know that feeling. All right. So we want to be able to, as women, be able to not only take care of, you know, human beings, but also uh, for, uh, for babies, right? And so this particular episode is called Pets Are Family Too. This is episode 50, and it's brought to you by Airborne Freight and Cargo Services. 
John Shoe Store and Accessories, Your Lane Life Coaching, Family Medicine Center, Bahama Odds and Ends, Party Supplies, and Emmanuel Medical Center. Now, my predictions of emotions today for this episode, I believe would be 95% serious aha moments because we're going to hear from a doctor, not just any doctor, a veterinarian that can give us insight on how we can ensure that our pets remain as healthy and stable as much as they possibly can. Um, I would say 5% laughter because I think this particular doctor have a little one or two little comical remarks. <laughs> Meeting him, he, he made me laugh once or twice. So I'd say 5% laughter in this. 0% tail drops. I don't think nobody crying unless they remember brownie. Everyone had a brownie. Everyone grew up with a brownie. Hats off to brownie. I, have to, I don't have anything to pour for my brownie that I had growing up. But everyone had a brownie. So if you want to cry about brownie, then go right ahead. Now let's introduce our guest. We don't want to delay any more time. We have with us Dr. Kwasi Smith. He was born and hailed from West End, Grand Bahama. Dr. Smith is a graduate of St. John's College Giants, right? Mm -hmm. yep. He received his Bachelor of Science degree at Tuskegee University and his doctorate degree in veterinary medicine at the University of the West Indies. Dr. Smith is the head veterinarian at Marathon Veterinary Clinic located on Marathon Road. Dr. Kwasi, thank you so much for joining us on your Lane Talk Show today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for considering me. I hope I do well. Of course you will. I will try. We're gleaning from your knowledge. <clears throat> I will try. In fact, I was told that you are one of the um, the best or the, the most sought after I don't know. That's what they tell I'm me. Listening. That's what they told me in the country. So I wanted Ooh. to have the best, right? Okay. Right. I'll try. Right. Okay. Now I can tell you just before we start. Um, I I did a little internship. I wouldn't call it an internship. A little summer, a little something with Doctor Sands mm -hmm. growing up. This was years ago, about twenty more than twenty years ago, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I remember saying, "Oh yes, I want to be." A veterinarian this mm -hmm. is what i want to do so let me just connect myself with one so that i can have a little insight on what to do and what it's all about what happened what didn't happen the things that i saw oh my god i'm traumatized um really i'm telling you i think <laughs> being with him um has taught me a lot of course um i when i first started of course he had me with cleaning kennels. You know, I didn't come there for that. I think, and I go straight into the operation room, okay. right? You know, but you was looking for glory. I was, look, I was, I wanted to put on my gloves. I had on gloves for sure, but definitely not in the operation room. So I started off with that. And then he realized, you know, how, oh, this is it. She comes on time. She's, you know, she's very attentive. She's good at what she does. So I, I, um, I got promoted from cleaning the kennels to helping to wash the dogs, mm -hmm. the pets. And from then, we're doing the, the washing the pets, bathing the pets myself. And then from there, I went to um, air cropping mm -hmm. and tail docking. Mm -hmm. And then I went from being his assistant or helping him with this. This is where I, I drew the line when I say enough is enough. We He had a dog that came in that was infested with um, Ticks. maggots. Markets. Oh, I saw the ticks thing. That that yeah. small thing. Is that you know that's with the dip and all of that. I didn't yeah. do that. Yeah. Maggots. Mm -hmm. So we're, I'm going to continue the story, but I want to talk to you. Okay. When did you first realize that you wanted to become a veterinarian? Um, I basically have the same story as you. Mm -hmm. I worked for Doctor Sands at Central Army Hospital from I was 14. Mm -hmm in 1988 to when I was about 34. Mm. In that period of 20 years, I did my bachelor's degree, master's and doctorate degree at different schools. Um, it, it was, it was a very good environment for learning yes. and working hard and understanding um, what needs to be done. Um, 
the time there cannot ever be replaced. Uh, the experience I garnered over the years, I still think of it from time to time, mm -hmm. especially not just the medicine or the surgery, but the owning of a practice. And, yeah. You know, how to deal with all those things because um, we have a lot of one man veterinary clinics or one woman, whichever way you want to say, since yeah. it's a woman's talk show. So it can get overbearing, but um, Central Island Hospital is by far one of the best places to gain tough skin. Absolutely. Because you see a million things every day, right? Yeah. Um, and, it, and, it, and you have to take the positive from it. We all started out cleaning cages, wash mm -hmm. bathing dogs. We all started doing that. In fact, I still do, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it, 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 it has never changed. It hasn't changed for me when I have volunteers. Mm -hmm. They do the same. Mm -hmm. um, it will give us an idea of how serious you are, right? What kind of aptitude you have, mm -hmm. what you can stomach and what you can't, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes things will come in that simple as maggots to something you might not think is ethical. And by what we do, we have to do certain things. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a labor of love, really. It's a labor of love. Um, it's a career that is demanding and um, you have to have absolute innate love for it to even carry on it as a career. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I strongly, for someone who's experienced mm -hmm. <laughs> a little taste of that, I believe that with all yep. my heart. So clearly what you're telling me is that, you know, you always had a uh, a desire yeah, love just animals. growing up around animals with my grandmother, um, we tend to have a very serious love for animals in my family. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely I was always in tune with dealing with some aspect of animal health or animal love or husbandry or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. Mm -hmm. um, I took it all the way. So, so you know, just curious, if you weren't, uh, if you didn't choose the practice of being a veterinarian, what other around would you have chosen? Oh, I wanted to be a chef. Oh. But my father said he wasn't paying for anybody to go to school to learn how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the that was the other that was no, the no, fallback no. plan. Right, right. That was but the you... fall fallback choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you you love cooking. I, I I try. I try. I can see it though. You kind of have like a chef, kind of like if you came a chef and said face. Today that I'm a chef, I would believe you. I try. What? I try. So okay. So what what were some of the animals that you grew up around? Mostly dogs and cats. There was your odd sheep or goat here and there, mm -hmm. being on the islands and being in settlements. Mm -hmm. um, that basically was kind of it. I. Most veterinarians have a affinity for certain animals or certain yeah. things. Um, I had phobias for certain animals over the years. Mm -hmm. I still am very careful with certain animals. Uh, I had a very serious horse phobia. Really? Yes. What, the fact that they may kick? Yes. Yeah. I had a very serious horse phobia. They yeah. easily spo spooked. spooked. Yeah. Um, I had a very good equine teacher in school he mm -hmm. kind of broke me out of that uh i still to this day have a cat phobia right because they're so quick and agile and you know they can be very aggressive they can be very aggressive right i don't i don't think it should be called a phobia if it's reasonable yeah it's I a, it's a slight a it's a slight size. it's a slightly re reasonable especially if you in my position every day. For those who are tuning in for the first time, the the, the other voice that you're hearing is that of our producer, Beats. Yeah, I was just yeah. saying, you know, up to a certain size, it's reasonable to be afraid of. Yeah, veterinarians, honestly, veterinarians are the practice of veterinary medicine is much like human medicine, right? I always tell people, yeah. um, you don't go to the same doctor if you have a UTI right. versus if you have a rash on your skin. So um, everything is not for me. Right, and I will definitely punt certain cases or certain animals. Like I don't 
necessarily want to be around a snake or a lion. That's a small right? question. What is the most exotic um, animal that you've ever... When you go through vet to? school, um, you, 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 you see everything. Elephant, yeah. camel, all kind of different monkeys... Um, crocodiles, these all, all you see all these things, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's actually a course in exotic animal mm -hmm. medicine and surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't too good at it. <laughs> didn't didn't did it never really wanted to be in that lane. I, just want, I was just about to say you're all. staying in your lane. Yeah, right? I have yeah. I have I have other colleagues who I would send a parrot to. Right. All right. I mm -hmm. that's not my thing. I would rather deal with sheep, goat. Horse, cow, dog, cat. But not horse, because you say you don't like. Yeah, I no, I, I, I said I had a phobia. You overcame. For it, but okay. I overcame I it. I some, you. some of the phobias, like you know, snakes and leopards and lions. I'm not interested in being too close to really? them. No, not, not too close. No, not at all. I understand. Outside of their, outside of their um, environment, I will stay well behind the gates. I'll look from afar. <laughs> right. <laughs> Listen, we brought you in here today to mm -hmm. discuss ways to take care of our pets, okay. right? I think we'll, we'll focus mainly just because you don't like all the other exotic things. But let's stick with cats and dogs today. Okay. And then when we bring you back as you're coming back, mm -hmm. uh, we'll discuss other like the hamsters and mm -hmm. the, the birds and all this other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's stick primarily with cats and dogs okay. now. Um, when, let's, let's start from scratch. So when a person is in... Um, is looking to adopt a pet, mm -hmm. right? What are some of the things that they should be looking for upon inspection? Um, and then what are some of the questions they should be asking the owner? Okay. Uh, the person adopting so an adoption. When you talk when you talk about adoption, this could be any age animal, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's yeah. say puppy. Mm -hmm. So let's say a six, eight, ten week old puppy. Um you need to know if that puppy has seen a vet before. Right. You need to know if that puppy has any problems, any intestinal parasites. Um, we can look at a puppy and tell certain things. Mm -hmm. um, degree of nutrition, is it malnourished? What's the skin looking like, right? Um, you can look on them, you can see fleas, you can see ticks, mange, all these things. Um, Obviously, the answer to your question ultimately is get it checked by a veterinarian, mm -hmm. right? Get it checked. Um, animals carry parasites that we can detect easily in an office visit. Mm -hmm. And then we decide and talk to about vaccination protocol, which is very important because we have diseases in the environment that are transmitted maybe from other dogs, other cats, um, birds, rats, all these things. And we have vaccines for a lot of these environmental diseases, especially the ones that we have here. Yeah. Um, a lot of times people feel like as if, just like in the COVID situation, oh, I vaccinated, but I still got it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what a vaccine is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. A vaccine is supposed to limit your degree of sickness. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously better to have it than to not have it because the treatment of some of these ailments and diseases that you can get without vaccination is, mm -hmm. can be very costly, right? Um, older pets, let's say you have a 14, 15 year old dog. Obviously that dog has more concerning issues to worry about, mm -hmm. heart, liver, kidneys, um, these things, if an animal is being adopted out, these things need to be checked on because you don't want to get a dog with heartworm or mm -hmm. tick disease or age-related heart failure. Um, not that you don't want to, but you have to know so that you can take care of it properly right. and get be, be realistic with what the vet tells you, right? Um, we see all these different ages of animals and sometimes people are concerned, especially when you have a senior pet, 15 mm -hmm. years old, it's having some heart problems. We could try and do a lot of stuff, but sometimes you have to be realistic with 
heart failure, mm -hmm. right? Um, 15 years in an animal's life is a very long time, but it's a short period for us, mm -hmm. technically, mm -hmm. right? You want to get a dog now and keep it for 20, 25 years, mm -hmm. that's unrealistic. Right? Okay, so what, are, what is the lifespan of a dog, a it, typical? <clears throat> Um, Do you have the little small? The little small dogs tend to have a longer lifespan, twelve to fifteen years. Yeah. Um, that's average. The, the the larger breed dogs tend to start being in the geriatric phase around eight, um, yeah. and then you have to consider genetic diseases for certain dogs. Yeah. Right. Whether it's Dobermans, Rottweilers, Pit Bulls, German Shepherds, they all have innate diseases that are part of their genetic makeup. Um, example, Dobermans have early onset heart disease, mm -hmm. right? Um, that can happen anywhere from four years old. Mm -hmm. I've seen it as young as a two-year-old dog, two-year-old mm -hmm. Doberman, right? You have to be very careful with them. Um, Rottweilers tend to get cancers of the spleen. Mm -hmm. Right, pit bulls tend to get cancers of the skin. Um, what Belgian Malinois? Bel that's what I have. Belgian Malinois can develop any of those things, but they are they are much more sturdy than the breeds that I've just um, mentioned. Oh, when, you, when you say sturdy, you they are a little bit more stoic health wise. They're okay. stronger dogs, uh, yeah. so most of the most most of their issues have to be with like. They can get a torn ACLs and stuff like that and rupture their knees and all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, here in the Bahamas now, you have to throw in outside of the genetic issues is the environmental issues. Yeah. We have fleas, they cause disease. We have um, ticks, they cause disease. We have mosquitoes, they cause disease. Mm -hmm. We have rats, they cause disease. But all of these things we address in our clinics. And... Um, we have, a, we have a good handle on it, no matter, it might seem like we don't sometimes to some people, but we have a very good handle on it. And a lot of times it's just up to you finding a veterinarian that you trust. Yeah. Um, there can be differing opinions, just like with any other profession. Um, but most, most, most veterinarians are quite amenable to explaining to you why they take a certain position on certain things. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so when we, um, let's talk about mating. Mm -hmm. I've seen I'm on a particular pet group um, on Facebook where they sell syringes to secure the semen of the male dog. Talk to me about that process. And let me know, what are, are, are there any health risks um, okay. regarding that, any form of risks? So the, that's called artificial insemination. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the... We're in the circle now where you're talking about breeding. Okay. So artificial insemination is usually done to get the proper genetics that you want. Mm -hmm. So you might want um you might want semen from a particular male dog, mm -hmm. but you're female and that male don't get along. You can use artificial insemination for that purpose. Um now, it's I a, just can it, we can we do the layman terms? Now, how how does this human get? How does the person acquire the semen in the in the syringe? Come, let's be let's go. <laughs> we go in there. There's a process of manual e ejaculation, right, um, of the male, and then that straw that it's in. It's not a syringe. Some people use a syringe. Raw, um, but the straw that the semen is in, because you can actually get semen shipped. Hmm. So in the States, right? Let's say there's a, you have a particular breed of dog. Mm -hmm. And you live in California. And the dog that you want the genetics from is in New York. Yeah. They don't have to meet. You can get semen from that. It's the same thing they do with horses, mm -hmm. right? They do it with horses, they do it with cows, they do it with sheep, they do it with pigs, they do it with all animals to increase genetic potential mm -hmm. um, for certain characteristics, right? Um, obviously, there's a time period you have to define for when it's best right. to get the semen into the female. And that can be done 
by doing certain tests um, for certain hormones right. because hormone levels rise and decrease depending on the stage of fertility in animals, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, no, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I, I some, have some of the, some of the, some of the problems that you can have is any female that goes into heat, the reproductive tract opens, the vagina, the cervix, right? Bacteria can get up in there. So when the heat, when the heat is finished, that closes, that closes up. Sometimes that bacteria gets trapped in the uterus. And we can't fight it off and they develop pus in the uterus, mm. which is an automatic emergency or very hysterectomy. Mm. It's very difficult to treat it medically because the pus just keeps growing and growing and you get a big ballooned um, uterus that mm. can actually rupture. And obviously pus is bacteria that gets into the bloodstream and makes the animals septic and sick and yeah. can affect other organs and stuff like that. Um, the process of breeding and the artificial insemination, it has its pros, it has its cons. Um, obviously it has its cons because I think we are at a point in this country where we are overbred now. We have too many animals, as you can drive around and see. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us, we do a lot of spay and noodle, but we don't do it on, like I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you, I'm only gonna tell you to spay and noodle your dog for medical reasons, right? Um, but we spay stray animals because we want to reduce the population that we have. It's, it's, it's a nuisance to some people. Mm -hmm. um, I spend a lot of time rehabilitating some of these animals also. But if you take one female who could have anywhere from, let's use a random number, eight to 10 puppies. Mm -hmm. She could have puppies twice a year. That's 20 puppies from that one female. Mm -hmm. So technically, you know, if we have 10 females, we got 200 puppies. Yeah. Where are they all going? Okay. Sometimes you get overcrowding. Overcrowding leads to easier spread of disease. Yeah. And then we have to think about the human aspect of it because we do have what we call zoonotic diseases. Mm -hmm. And those are diseases that can be transmitted between species, including humans and animals. So it's a public health issue also, right? But if you are a responsible breeder, um, I'm all for it. If you're not, I'm not. Listen, um, week before last, we saw two, I don't know, scruffy looking dogs. You could tell that they, they pot cakes, but they fluffy. Mm -hmm. So they had somewhere in their genes, they have a little bit of shit to a uh, pedigree yes. something in them, right? I don't know where they came from. One had a collar, one didn't. But they came in the yard and brazen enough, they barking at me in my yard, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, I don't know who the neighbor we actually took a picture. I took a picture and I sent it in the community to see, you know, to find out who dogs mm -hmm. they belong to. Um, nobody claimed them. And so a neighbor just sent, in, um, sent a message and said that they called someone to try to come and get the dogs yeah. themselves. But you have, when you say, um, Persons can be irresponsible. There are times, because I've, I've read and I've laughed at a few in this particular Facebook group, where <laughs> the dog <laughs> just brazen enough to try to do things even through the gate. You know, that's yep. the way to do that, right? So not all the time. It, it's it's because the person is irresponsible. Um, but that's just a joke. But um, let's talk about the fact that we have the pedigree dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have some people who want who are responsible but then they use their poodle to go and breed and crossbreed with you know other breeds mm -hmm. you know what are your thoughts on that shouldn't if a if a poodle is a poodle shouldn't a poodle mate with a poodle if so, should do, they should do. you know what i mean crazy is a purist dr smith understands the mixing of breeds to a particular end mm -hmm. right if you go back far enough all dogs are mixed okay. if you go back far enough. But I wouldn't take my Rottweiler and breed it with your German Shepherd at, in 2023. I wouldn't mm -hmm. do that. Um, breeding is a science for 
increasing genetic positives mm -hmm. and limiting genetic negatives, All right? Um, you can get, you know, there's a practice in food production of animals where if a particular animal is not producing, then that animal is culled, right? Because genetically speaking, that lack of production can be passed down vertically to its offspring. Mm -hmm. right? That might seem harsh, but it's a reality. Um, some people breed for color. Some people breed for structure. Some people breed for temperament, right? Um, so there's all kinds of factors, but all those things come with their pros and cons, right? right? There are certain colors of, of dogs that makes them more prone to skin problems, mm. right? Really? Yeah. Right? If you see a, like a blue or gray, whichever one color, we, we call blue and gray the same thing. Yeah. They're interchangeable or a fawn or a red. Those dogs have genetic or more prone to skin infections. Then you have um, albino dogs. Mm. They tend to have less melanin, mm -hmm. and melanin also is responsible for your mm -hmm. eye color. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have melanin in your eyes, then you end up blind. Guess what? I want to talk a little bit more about that, mm -hmm. but let's just take a quick break. Not a problem. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear more about oh, these boy. genetics, and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Um, stay tuned, everyone. Yeah. All right, so we're still live. Um, um, I want us to find a way to get back or uh, to refocus on, you know, who we have, like the animals that we do have. Okay. So when we do talk again, um, we go back live on the radio. We want to talk about the cross breeding, uh, breeding, and how persons just do it just because they want to make money. Our oh, you get me in any trouble today. No, but we gotta, we got Let's go there because we're talking about we want to be responsible, okay. right? We want to be responsible. Go ahead, Beats. So essentially, it's like genetic modification, in a sense. Ah, uh, you can say that. Yeah, you can say that. You can definitely, oh. you can definitely say that. Um, like I say, there's numerous reasons for breeding. Mm -hmm. um, think about it. If you go to get a puppy, something simple as the color of the puppy mm -hmm. can sway your mind as to which one of these eight puppies do I want. Something simple as that. Yeah. Right? If you are breeding a particular dog, let's who comes in let's say Dobermans. They come in black, mm -hmm. they come in red, they come in fawn. Right? From fawn. fawn is like um like a reddish, like a light silverish like I can I can show you right now. No, I've never seen a fawn Doberman. Basically like that. Oh, okay. okay. So this okay. is a fawn. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. And then you have the red. <laughs> you have the black. Yeah. I've actually seen albino Dobermans. And then you have, you know, you can have another color called um, the blue, the grayish type. You can mm -hmm. have that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say you go oh. to a Doberman breeder and he wasn't expecting it, but then you see a pretty color like this yeah. you say oh i want that color and let's see i'm breeding dobermans and i notice these are selling at a particular premium versus mm -hmm. the others then i can try breed more of this color in the future so yes you can use the word genetic modification mm -hmm. right because you're trying to get a particular color um some people breed for structure mm -hmm. right um Let's say pit bulls, right? You have XLs, you have the bullies, you have modifications of them, but you find that some of them breed, some breeders breed for the structure of the animal. Right. No overbites, no lean, very lean backs. You want a, a particular muscle type mm -hmm. and a showy dog mm -hmm. because sometimes you can have old genes pop up that are not what 
you want it and, it, and yeah. it's unexpected. Yeah. Right? Okay. So is, is that in, in any way like harmful to the dogs? Anytime you anytime you breed, you can double up on good traits as well as bad traits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Especially if you do certain things like there's line breeding, right? Um, you might decide to double up on the traits by mating. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Welcome back. If you're tuning in um, with us, if you're just popping on by, we have with us Dr. Kwesi Smith, a veterinarian, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that is just answering all our, you know, our questions on how we can ensure that our fur babies stay healthy and strong and how to maintain them um, as best as we possibly can. As women, you know, whenever we're crying, we're in our bed, we just have, we had a heartbreak or someone make us mad, we go call, we call Rose or we call um, whatever name you have your, your dog and you, you let them come inside the bed with you and you pet them or you have your, your cat, you know, and you pet your cat and you're feeling down. All right. And so we as women, we want to ensure that our because we're only focusing on cats and dogs today, guys. So we want to make sure that our pets remain as healthy. And we're just getting a little, you know, um, insight about, you know, um, crossbreeding and um, genetics, etc. So Dr. Smith, we were talking about being responsible breeders. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that when persons breed, they breed for various reasons. What if somebody's just... Somebody just wants to breed because they just want the money. So they just, I mean, what, how do you, <laughs> I mean, you want to ultimately have some return. Um, but sometimes I assume, let me be honest with you. When I, I got uh, my Belgian Malinois for Christmas, mm -hmm. when my husband gave it to me as a gift, he bought a female. I intentionally said, I told him, I mean, respectfully, so. Is it okay for me to get a male instead of a female? Because I didn't want to breed. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be able to have a male, mm -hmm. you know, because I, and then not furthermore, it's all the, the bleeding and stuff that goes yeah. along with it. But I didn't want to have to do it because of the money. Understood. Um, you have some persons who like that. And then some persons who just want it. So the word, the word breeder is used very loosely. So being the purest that I am, if you are breeding just for money, then I take that label of breeder off of you. What do you call that person? A pimp? Someone who's someone who <laughs> mates dogs for money. <laughs> pimp. I, I don't want to offend anybody. No, no, no. However, um, that should be, not that should be, that should be your last focus yeah. when it comes to, I'm not, I'm not concerned when, when, when you come to me, I'm not concerned about you. As My concern for your animal and what you came to me for is expen exponentially greater than my right. concern for you. Yeah. If I have to deliver bad news, I have to deliver bad news. Yeah. If I have good news, I deliver good news. Either way, I will put everything on the table and let you know where we can go from there. Mm -hmm. Um. The breeding for money thing, we see that a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And most of the time, people that breed for money are below the quality of care that a veterinarian would want to have mm -hmm. in animals. Simple stuff like, you know, we have a lot of veterinarians out here who haven't been to vet school. Stop it. Yes. So we have a lot of people that practice veterinary medicine because they went online or some, I mean here in, or they in, had a in bad Venice. or they had a bad yeah or they had a bad experience with a veterinarian or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot out of us personally because we know most we know that we did what we were supposed to do. Yeah. But sometimes things don't always work out. Sometimes you have situations where animals will get sick even in the face of doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Environmental diseases, like I spoke about earlier. So as for the breeder thing, um, you know, 
you know, Bahamas is very incestuous. I just want to practice veterinary medicine. If you have a particular problem and you're a breeder or not, if it's something that I, I'm confident I can deal with, I deal with. I don't get into the politics as much anymore. Mm. I used to. I know what you're talking about with those Facebook groups. I had to come out of all of them. They were very annoying. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of bad information. <laughs> right. Right? A lot of bad information. So um, I had to come out of them. They're going to cause me to have a stroke. Right. But uh, not to, like I said again, not to offend anybody, but I'm a veterinarian first. Right. Right? I don't believe in cutting corners. Um, I know what I know. Um, yes, we could play around with certain things, but most of us know generally more than you would ever know. Right. So, so let's, let's, let's talk about, let's say a responsible breeder. Mm -hmm. You have a dog, you have a cat or whatever have you. And, you know, maybe it's because the, the cat is on heat or the dog is on heat mm -hmm. that you would want to allow her to. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that, if, unfortunately, or fortunately, is your decision to make as to whether or not you breed your dog, right? right? And what you're breeding it for. Um, the, the label doesn't mean much to me anymore because I'm such a purist, right? I feel as if, if you're going to breed and you get some puppies, you should definitely put them on a program okay you have a child you go to the pediatrician the pediatrician say hey over the next six eight months we're going to vaccinate so so this way this way. right you go right it's all it's simple right simple basic health and basic taking care because you're not going to go and ask a lawyer how you when if they could vaccinate your dog or what you what do you think you should do with this puppy it's, just, it's not you know you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people, the, the 2023 is the age of the internet, right? A lot of people are very internet smart, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's fine, right? But there's a foundation that you have to have that you cannot get on the internet for anything, right? Right. For any, some, something simple, simple as, to, you know, if I vaccinate your puppy today, what should you expect in the next two, three days? So let's or talk weeks? about that then, because we want to know. Let's say you get your puppy, you get mm -hmm. your cat, um, you go through the process. How many shots? I know the answer, but for persons who are listening, you sure you know the answer? Because I don't. Yeah, I, I don't thought know it's, the answer. it's three shots before See, you yeah, actually get ex exactly. It's not three shots? Exactly. Because you might have been spending all that money. No, no, no. You might, you might think it's three. Some it's, people might think it's four. Some people might think it's five. So how do we determine ah that? exactly what happens you have for? <laughs> come talk to us talk how do you determine how many shots it takes to give your your pet your, oh, your puppy or your cat prior to um let's say rehoming in the world not the bahamas right in the world a fully vaccinated puppy is considered to have at least four vaccines okay Some, at what age now, they usually just start between six and eight weeks old. Yes. You will find some vets that start at six weeks. You will find some that start at eight weeks. Mm -hmm. The protocols now are not the same as when I was a boy. Mm -hmm. Medicine changes. Mm -hmm. It has been proven best to vaccinate your puppy up to 18, 16, 18 weeks old. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that because of how the immunity from the mummy wears off. Right. It usually wears off between six and eight weeks. So that's why we give those boosters. But you can have a situation where it lasts up to four or five months, which means that the mummy's immune system is protecting the puppy. So every time you vaccinate, the mummy's immune system will kill the vaccine. So then you end up with a six, eight month old puppy who doesn't have any protection because the mummy mummy was protecting it. So it's right. a catch twenty two. I get it. However, for the most part, the mummy's immunity is gone between six and eight weeks old. Now, do we tailor our vaccines because of breed? I do. Right? Mm -hmm. 
um let's say i'm a new owner of a doberman or uh, let's use doberman mm. let's say i'm a new owner of a doberman because of what i know there is a good chance that two weeks after every vaccine i'm gonna send off to the lab to see if the dog has antibodies for this particular disease mm. we don't normally just offer that in clinic right away because that's costly right but i'm gonna do it for my dog because you know because i had this situation with a past dog before who did not respond to his vaccines wow. and that happens it's called zero conversion or the lack of zero conversion when you get a vaccine your body's supposed to react to it and build what you call cells yeah. or memory cells for that particular vaccine that you gave. Yeah. Sometimes animals don't convert. That happens. We call them non-converters or they need more boosters. Right. My dog, he's eight now, but he personally needed five vaccines before he was protected against power virus. And I tested him two weeks after every vaccine it happens so you you're referring to your doberman but what other breed of animal um dogs you consider may have that same issue any german breed rottweiler doberman german, german shepherd. shepherd a lot a lot of dogs take a while it, it is i don't want to those those particular dogs we know from data have what we call low passive transfer of immunity mm -hmm. that's the immunity they get from the mummy's milk mm -hmm. we know that that is low right they are much more fragile in an environment where that might have certain diseases that we vaccinate for. Mm -hmm. um, for me, in a, in, if I was the czar of everything, all these animals would be vaccinated at least four times. And some of, like, some of the German breeds, I will actually vaccinate them again in six, at six months old. I was, was going to ask. So after you've already done, let's say at puppies, they get their mm -hmm. first, like four sets, mm -hmm. roughly, mm -hmm. of vaccinations. What happens the, the the next year and the year after that? Okay, so now this is this, this is something else now. So we sh technically we should vaccinate every year. However, it's twenty twenty three now, and there's a thought that some vaccines last longer than the year. Mm -hmm. So there are vets who will vaccinate your dog every three years. And there, and then there are some who are sticking to the yearly thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously that changes. Um, some people change vaccine protocols or stop vaccinating at certain ages, right. right? I have a colleague, he doesn't vaccinate animals over 10, 10 years old. Mm. Now, me and him were back and forth about certain vaccines. Mm -hmm. I, I believe there are certain vaccines that have to be given every year. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about bacterial and viral vaccines, the bacterial vaccines, I, in my opinion, need to be given every year. Mm -hmm. um, so what it, would you call a typical bacterial vaccine? Leptospirosis. You ever heard of it? No. All, or every, anytime you vaccinate your dog, most of the time, your dog has probably gotten it. It's been it's a disease transmitted by rats that call, that Ooh. can cause liver and kidney failure, okay. and humans can get it too, okay. right? And it causes liver and kidney failure, and you end up jaundiced, and it's a very difficult, difficult disease to treat because by the time you see it, we are already fifty percent behind the eight ball, mm. and then we have to do a lot of intensive care to try and get in front of it. Thank you saying so much, man. Yeah, so I, what do you, you do with, with people who have dogs, who have outside pets, mm -hmm. like the pit bulls and the German shepherds? Yeah, and the, uh, unfortunately, uh, I had to, we had to take our Belgian mm -hmm. mama out of our house. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. They can't, they, they, they're, not, they're not for the house. They're not for the house. They, um, they need, they, they are working dogs. Yes. And when you get a working dog, you have to be prepared to work. I know. If you see... If you notice, over the last 20 years, there's been a change in the use of the German shepherds and the Rottweilers and the shepherds. That's even say for like the police mm -hmm. for, for the world, mm -hmm. right? The modern ones become more popular. Yeah, They are smaller. They don't have the same 
hip issues, mm -hmm. they don't have the same skin issues, they're sturdier, and they could go longer. Mm -hmm. So they could go and run and run and run and run and run. And they're just as protective and they're super smart. So you can't have is a Marlon Wash should not be in an apartment, right? And unless if he could be an outside indoor dog, fine. But he needs he needs to go. They have high high energy. High energy. This we have. I mean, I don't. Um, this is a two story house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very mm -hmm. large. Mm -hmm. Um, but my <laughs> issue, I don't have. A, I didn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, I would suck my teeth every time I see things and that stuff or whatever. But I cry for a good five days when my husband said enough is enough and the dog has to go outside. Mm -hmm. I was back, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I I didn't mind taking my dog out to let her, he literally climbed the coconut trees to get coconuts. Exactly. I don't know if you've ever seen that reported. Yeah, so. Oh my God. Um, he is extremely, he has high energy as you stated, yeah. like all Marlon was, yeah. but I don't, I didn't mind. It mm -hmm. was only times when of course when it was raining mm -hmm. too much or whatever have you that we would have, when we kept, him inside then he just everything just i mean tornado in the house they get they get they get bored very, very easily quickly, yes very very easily because it's in their genes to be active basically the all the, the time yeah all the time they're very inquisitive right and if you you can and that could be with any dog but the malinois especially since it's, uh, you have a you have one and that's personal to you they they need they need to be stimulated. They need. I don't to even have the time to raise one of them because <laughs> you have you have you you have to you have you have to have a lot of time, yeah. and uh, um, you have to be very focused on their training and their um, discipline. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to um, my trainer Clifton Bo. He did an awesome, awesome, awesome job. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. I mean, to this, I haven't really been doing much of training because from what he has taught i just use whatever he, he taught See, me the training, he, he remembered that the, so i don't really have to do right that and, anymore and the training has a lot to do with your input also because i'm pretty sure cliff told you when he drops your dog back now you have to do reinforcement mm -hmm. right on a daily basis because training is discipline yeah and i don't even like to be told what to do but an animal definitely would try to break that discipline because they spoil. They want to do stuff that yeah. you don't necessarily want them to do. Simple as um, training them to go outside to use the bathroom, mm -hmm. right? Um, that has to be reinforced, mm -hmm. right? And so they could know that, hey, you could sit by this door or tap on it. Because I've seen some very smart animals mm -hmm. in my time, mm -hmm. very, very smart animals who would not go in the house and wait until you and will actually listen like i have a friend with a dog it's like talking to a person like this dog basically understands everything everything you say and has boundaries yeah he would sit there until you say come in he would not come he would not follow you into an open room unless you say come why, just, uh, why why titan can't be like that i, I if titan was like that he would have still been in our house to this day yeah. but anyway i'm just fearing the, the great um hot cake singularity and what that is is i feel as though somewhere in nassau because like you said the melanoirs mm -hmm. and the huskies mm -hmm. and they're very popular now huskies too. I, I feel as though we're going to get to a point where these are very smart dogs mm -hmm. They're gonna get out. The pot cake, you know, people don't give them credit, but they're also a very smart dog. Yeah, oh, they're very smart. Yeah, listen. I think it's we're gonna get to a point where we're gonna see melon one and huskies mixing with pot cakes, and they're gonna have a litter of puppies. I don't think so. And when they hit the streets, it's over. No, you can a, a go to alone, the drive price through. for a husky and a price for a Malinois. I've seen, I've seen, every, I've seen, I've seen every, I've seen, I've seen every mix of dog possible. <laughs> you would not believe some of the accidents that I've seen. Yeah, yeah, accident. I've seen every mix of dog possible. Wow. I've seen Chihuahua Rottweiler. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> these things happen. These it things happens. happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen. Um, Snauzer Pitbull, mm. right? 
I'm seeing every mix of dog possible. Oh, oh. Right? Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the Royal Bahamian Pot Cake is a diverse mix mm -hmm. of a lot of breeds over my lifetime. They're loyal, don't right? they? They're loyal. They you, are. See, you see, and it's and, actually pronounced Potakake. What? I've never heard that. that. Bahamian Potakake, you've never. No. Who said that? Who said that? Who came That's up with that? The, that's the it's in the, the dictionary it's the bohemian who put who who did that though the bits of the bohemian who put it in there? the guy who remember during the pandemic when they flew all those okay okay come let's talk all right, all right, all right, right. I, I never heard that i've never heard that let's talk to us about because yes i i have seen i have a um somebody on my facebook that is presently rehoming huskies mm -hmm. right Let's talk about the environment that we're in, you know, and the climate that we have. I mean, how that isn't that a health risk, or you know, how how risky is that? Just the 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 answer to that question is not is not an is not a health risk, um, that is exponentially above any other health risk for certain breeds of dogs. Really? Okay, so you're talking about heat, right? Yeah, I mean, I think because from what I know, because their coat is thick. They right. can overheat. Right. But then you have bulldogs with short noses who overheat and bullies with short faces who overheat just as quickly and okay. get heat stroke just as quickly. And they have short hair versus the thick hair. Okay. So it's a management issue. Right? Obviously, in August, you have a big two story house, you have a balcony on your bedroom. It doesn't make sense to lock up your house and put your husky on the balcony. For the day while you're gone, right. he's gonna get baked, or any other dog. Really, we see a lot of heat strokes on all kind of animals, mm -hmm. right? So it's a management issue, also, right? I remember in the summers it used to be very hot. My dogs used to drink a lot of water, mm -hmm. and you know, Dr. Sands told my father, put ice chips, put Gatorade in the water. Make sure we move the water because the sun moves. So if right. they move the water in their kennels, else they could just turn into hot boiling water for tea. Right. Right. And the dogs are not going to drink it. And they overheat and then they get dehydrated, right. traded. And then you have a, what you call a heat stroke heat or stroke. heat mm -hmm. exhaustion. You have a hot mm -hmm. dog. Right. Well, <laughs> uh -huh. so it's a management issue for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it's almost like saying for me personally, I believe any dog could live in the house. I don't believe house dog means a small little fluffy right. couch dog. I don't I believe any dog can be a house dog. Right? I've I know my best friend has a hundred and forty pound cane corso. Mm -hmm. He's inside outside as however he pleases. Mm -hmm. I'm when he was younger, there was a time when he had to be very, you know, but he have he can keep him in the house and his sofa wouldn't get eaten up. Right. He, he doesn't eat any shoes anymore, right? He might bite up his bed, but he knows he can't bite up these shoes anymore. Right. He can't bite up the furniture, you know? But the, the, the acclimation to the climate is possible, and then there's a management issue. Mm -hmm. And that comes, that, that falls under the umbrella of responsibility. Right. Because I always tell people, animal ownership is not a right, it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. And that privilege comes responsibility. Mm -hmm. So all of these things that we're talking about as for health, it's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so and I, I know people with Akitas. I've I grew up and I knew people with Siberian Huskies and they did well. Right? Yeah, but and it has to be a point where you keep the air conditioner on all day um, for the for the for the dog. Yeah, because yeah? I know of somebody who does that by the way. Who? You? Not me. Yeah, I, I wish. I, I'm about to bring. I'm about to bring Titan in my house tonight. Let yeah. me see what my husband. Yeah. Would um. <laughs> some people will do that. That's good. That's fine. Right. Some people will leave leave them in a room where the fan is circulation, right. the window is open. That's fine. Um. But again, like I say, it's just a management issue. Um. You know, you don't you want them to have access to cool, clean water all yeah, the time. Yeah. Um, obviously, if we leave our house at six o'clock and don't come back till six o'clock, we have to figure out how we can keep the water cool, um, keep it in a, a place where it doesn't get too hot for them, where they 
don't want to drink it at mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. and then they get dehydrated and then you get a heat stroke mm -hmm. but again it's just a, a a responsibility and management issue for me mm -hmm. let's talk about we didn't really touch on cats i think i can bring you back okay to talk about no, cats. Let, let let's talk see. a little bit about managing cats mm -hmm. that Darius do not like for some unknown reason but um let's take a break first and then mm -hmm. when we get back we're gonna we're gonna touch a little bit about cats and then we're gonna talk about you know um managing our pets hearts you know using various like heart guards or whatever other tablets and pills that we um may want to uh, insert in their foods or whatever have you for them to you know be as healthy as possible yeah have their heart functioning as best as possible so let's take a break beats and then right after that we'll get into it <laughs> So okay, so um, what was it that you you so that's here's, uh -huh. what, here's what happened. So uh -huh. I made the mistake of I got a young I got a kitten, I had a kitten and a baby at the same time. Uh -huh. And that kitten wasn't a regular kitten. This kitten was given to me um courtesy of Her Majesty's prison. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a prison cat. Prison mm -hmm. kitten. Mm -hmm. Um and you know, I always had cats when I was young. Okay. And some things you don't realize until you get older. Mm -hmm. And I learned that um, cats are not very nocturnal animals. At nighttime, they they, are they, they up like yeah. that's that's day time. Yeah. And nighttime, I like to sleep. And the cat, she the kid, she wasn't having that <laughs> at all. No. Very clean animal. She straight away she knew that's my box. Yes. Cool. Clean enough for me. I got daddy. <laughs> Nighttime, this house is mine. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times, you know, I had the baby monitor on one night I I saw cat <laughs> like was coming into the room, but the baby was like, I was like, Yeah. Time gotta, to go. You gotta go. Oh my god. Well, it was that and then it was something that I, I wish I could remember his name. It was another veterinarian mm -hmm. that was on one of our shows. And he told me He's like, oh, you got to make sure I get the cat spayed because, well, two things. One, didn't know this. Cats apparently come pre-packaged with tapeworm. Didn't know that. That was like, wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, oh, and you got to make sure I get it spayed because apparently when cats go on heat, they stay on heat until to completion. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I adopted my cat from Human Society. Mm -hmm. I've had it for two years now. When I when we first adopted the cat, this is for my daughter because she always wanted a cat, so we got it. We initially thought that the cat was a male. Um, so it was so that it was happens. interesting that when we went to get um when we went to get the cat the checkup that it was a female. It was like, Oh my god, we're so sorry. But, we're just you know, we trying to, to show no, you off, I feel like everyone as a cat has come to that point. This is a man or woman. Yeah. Like, um, but I've grown to love her. It's so funny that when she, when persons come to the house, people will never know that mm. I have a cat. Never, right. ever. Um, the litter is secured and everything. Um, and she does not come out to meet anyone at all. So the only time I get to see her um, is when I'm there by myself. She does not like my first son, my, my firstborn sounds, at all. Sounds like a cat. I'm telling you. But she <laughs> loves the other two. She loves the girls. She hangs with the girls. Sounds like a cat. Yes. And she is very, very nocturnal. She's yeah. very noisy. And especially around Christmas time with the, with the you know, mm. stuff on the tree. That's just her. And we love her. Yeah. I love cats. I, I think, you know, when my kid gets a little older, yeah. I'm looking at, you know, maybe getting some pets. But right now. Oh, and I just got so a turtle much. and say praise a lot. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, the cat, well, the cat situation is unique, but it's the same when it comes to if something simple as vaccinations. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily come pre-packaged with tapeworms. That's fleas transmit tapeworms. So fleas, if once fleas, once fleas bite your animal, two, two major concerns is tapeworms. 
and then they can get a flea allergy on the skin that looks like mange. Mm. They also transmit certain bacterial diseases sometimes that can cause some problems that technically can be diagnosed quickly. Um, cats do get heartworms. Cats also get leukemia. Um, and for lack of a better word, feline AIDS. Yeah. It's not the same virus as AIDS in humans, but it does the same thing. It's called feline immunodeficiency mm -hmm. virus, mm -hmm. FIV, and it works in cats just like how it works, and just like how the AIDS virus works in humans. So how how do you know if your cat? Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't taken the cat to the vet for the year. I haven't done it. Okay, so we have a very big stray population of cats, right? Mm, sorry. And let's let's go back on and then we can talk about it. Welcome back. Now, just before we continue, I would like to let you know that the trusted and experienced team of Dr. Sean Knowles and Dr. Norad Morgan at Emmanuel Medical Center has so many different um, services to offer. Uh, services that include annual physicals, treatment for mental health disorders, addiction counseling for substance misuse and gambling, confidential STI and HIV treatment and management, cosmetic surgery, preoperative physicals and labs, hypertension, diabetes and cholesterol management, health and medical certificates, sick and well child visits, men's health and home visits. Emmanuel Medical Center is located off Mackey Street at the corner of Roosevelt Avenue and Carob Road. Their clinic hours are Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call 393-9355. That's 393-WELL, W-E-L-L. Emmanuel Medical Center, helping you achieve wellness. Now back to Doc, <coughs> Dr. Smith. Mm -hmm. We were talking about cats because you got to bring in cats. You yeah. can't leave here without talking mm -hmm. about some cats, you yeah. know? Um, and so we were talking about how there are some certain diseases that cats have right. that we have to really, you know, pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions I want to ask is how do you determine um, when a cat, you know, has these things? Just say for one who, don't, who may not do the annual visits. Mm -hmm. And they would probably only take that cat once they see some issue. Right. But what are some of the issues that one can tell if a cat um, um, is under some type of medical um, So cats, are, cats, are, cats can be a little bit more stoic than dogs. Right. So some simple stuff like hair loss, coughing, diarrhea. Um, you can have situations where you see blotchy spots on the cat's skin, mm -hmm. little red spots. Those are all indicative of internal issues. Mm -hmm. Cats, one of the more common issues with cats are urinary tract infections. Mm -hmm. They get them a lot. Um, cats also get heartworm disease. Um, they get leukemia. They get feline AIDS, mm -hmm. all of which we can test for in clinics. Um, blood work, stool samples. Mm -hmm. Um, some, 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 some feline AIDS cats are very, um, what's the word? Very transparent to us. Mm -hmm. Gum issues, periods of up and downness, if you want to say that, fevers, um, immunodeficiency viruses will break down your immune system, of course. Right. So you can get respiratory tract infections. So you can have cats that show in signs of having a cold. Right. Or you could look at their gums and sometimes very red. And then you can put together a list of differentials. Um, obviously, that list could be long, but you can rule them out by testing at certain, you know, cl clinics. So how often should we take a a track, um, take a cat for checkup? I, wanna, I feel I feel guilty because I haven't done it for the. You no, know, as a, as as a, as, a, as this is the issue. As a purist, I'm gonna say your animal needs an annual every year. Okay. As a purist, right? 
I'm going to say your animal needs an annual yeah. every year. Mm -hmm. And depending on the age of that animal, um, that would require certain things. Obviously, the status of the liver and the kidneys and the heart is not as important in a two, three-year-old cat as it might be in a 10, 12-year-old cat. Yeah. Because cats do get um, heart disease at that age, which would need extra. We, we do everything you could possibly, you whatever you can go to the hospital for, we, we can do. Yeah. R blood work, radiographs. The real veterinarians ultra, not. The real no, ones. no, all, we are all real. We are all, listen, the, the, we're getting into the economics now. We're getting into the economics. Because I could quote what you told me. No, we could get, we, we getting into the economics. Yeah, no, stay focused, that's stay focused. However, no, stay focused. Uh -huh. you could get all that Not stuff. Me. You get, you, you you could take your dog now and do an EKG, mm -hmm. right? We could do EKGs that will go off to a cardiologist. Yeah. We could, we, you know, you, you've, 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 you've had blood sent off to the lab. Yeah. You've had urine sent off to the lab. Mm -hmm. We do all of that, mm -hmm. right? However, we work around that a lot of time because the economics of real health. Like if my the way I go about raising my puppy is probably going to be way it's different expensive. than the way you go about it, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to spend money every two weeks to test your dog after vaccines to right. see if it's protected. You're going to trust the process, right? I, however, I'm a scientist. I want to know how long it's going to take. Right. I want to see. So now if my dog, if I vaccinated my dog three times for Pavo, or if I vaccinated my cat for feline AIDS, I'm going to take blood after a period of time, send it away, which is a fee with FedEx and all that to the lab. And I want to know if this vaccine has kicked in yet or if I need to give another one. Can I, can I just say something? Mm -hmm. I, I just want to express how gobsmacked I was when I first found out <laughs> one about the tapeworm thing mm -hmm. and then again the feline age and then file ultimately that cats get sick like growing up I honestly believe <laughs> cats were invulnerable mm -hmm. like when that's saying that cats have none I had a I had a cat when I was growing up that there was a point in time when I thought that my kid, my cat was gonna die because it literally had a hole in its stomach. Yeah. My parents, they aren't the type to Food send the take the cat to the, to the veterinary, yeah. especially not a cat. They're not mm -hmm. gonna do that, mm -hmm. All right? Um, I kid you not, my cat went into the bush. Three days later, he came back and he was just, I'm good. <laughs> no hole. Listen, listen. Not Nothing. even that. It just reminds me. Like, I remember at the beginning of the show, I said everybody had a brownie. Everybody mm -hmm. grew up in a brownie. Mm -hmm. Our brownies live longer than these pedigree dogs. I'm like, well, I try to figure out what's going on. <laughs> and y'all dog just taking all our money. Because so, we, could, we could treat, no, uh, so, I don't so, know that. So, but we could treat our dogs like brownie them so who, again, who survived very, so, very, so very again, long years. Anytime you mix anything, technically you, you think, might yeah. have better genetics the immunity get, is get, stronger you think mm, mm, yeah. Yeah. i don't want to say that because what i do i need to find i do a lot of, i do a lot of infectious diseases right. so i see all breeds of dogs with all kind of different things yeah. so i don't want to say yeah and that's but that's environmental right mm -hmm. when you talk about innate issues that different species of animals have and different breeds of cats or dogs then right. you get into a particular area no, right I, Sim simple as um simple as which dogs are more prone to parvo virus mm -hmm. right yeah. there's a list for that i have a book it actually is a what you call a dog bible yeah of the of diseases genetic right. diseases mm -hmm. so you can look up a malinois and it will give you these are studies that were done and oh malinois are more prone to getting this that next thing Right, like a German Shepherd, mm -hmm. Rottweilers. We know they have issues with their hips. Mm -hmm. We know they have issues with their hearts. Mm -hmm. We know they have it, cancers and certain things, right? Those are things that we necessarily can't always avoid because it will happen at certain points and and, and ages, right? I, I, and I just think it's just so interesting. I'm sorry to be talking so mm -hmm. much in your show, Go Trishon, ahead. Go ahead, but please. it just, it all brings back, like how you were talking about the genetics and, you know, sometimes, um, like I said, with the animals that don't produce, they get 
killed mm -hmm. and so that they don't pass on these traits mm -hmm. and it all comes back to the Bahamian Portakaki where would you please talk to the Bahamian Portakaki <laughs> you don't go to where, where, go ahead, go ahead. where you have these animals that have survived some dire conditions yeah I mean surviving on literal trash learning how to cross the street by somehow learning the difference in these colors because yes. I, I always thought dogs couldn't see color adaptation is a serious thing you know yeah right and adaptation is a very serious thing so over time the the the, the park geeks that are more successful they meet and then they pass on these genes and now you have a brownie that literally <laughs> hurricane dorian come and he gone outside and he come back when it was over with food and it's like y'all and good. he survived honey. yeah okay but that's because like you're saying with the these traits that have been passed on and you know to, i had a to, professor who used to tell me there's no such thing as a healthy animal and if you can't find something wrong with a animal you should quit mm. i could find something wrong with your mom and mom i'm sure i could find something wrong with your cat I, 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 right? There's always something. There, yeah. There is something. Yeah, because now that depends on how deep you want to go. Mm. Right? How deep? I watch a lot of medical shows. Mm -hmm. Right? Chicago Med, I'm on my marathon right now. Mm -hmm. Someone coming for an air infection, they do every blood work, head scan, check everything that could possibly cause an air infection. An air infection right? Which includes now, they call the site people to talk to you to see if you did something harmful to yourself. Right. So now they're covering all their bases. Yeah. We don't live. We don't live in a world where we have to cover all our bases all the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're not a very. You know, you don't get a lot of suing for animals type situation. Mm -hmm. Um. But. We do cover ourselves because we could always there's, a, there's always a financial constraint as to how much or how in depth and how much testing I could do right. because you have to pay for that right right you have to pay for that. I tell my friends who have big dogs right 120 pounds 130 pounds I don't want this dog to get sick because yes. my even if I give you a 30% discount, you're going to be like, what? Yes. Right? Because it's a big dog. Yes. If I treat your 20 pound dog for something, it's different than a 70 pound dog. Yes. And it's different than a 150 pound dog, even if I use the same meds, because weight dictates dosages. Yes. The cat situation, obviously, we vaccinate cats for a lot of things, depending on their environment, right? Mm -hmm. um, feline immunodeficiency virus, feline leukemia. The other types of disease that can cause um, respiratory issues, mm -hmm. right? I um, wish you could vaccinate cats for crazy. Well, I wish it too, right? But uh, this, <laughs> the reason why we, we do a lot of spaying and neutering, one, because of the overpopulation, right. and also their health risk to keeping your animal intact for long periods, mm -hmm. right? For instance, the pyometra or the infection of the uterus that I talk about, that is life-threatening, which can be avoided by spaying a female. Mm -hmm. They are just like us. They get testicular cancer, they get ovarian cancer, right? So we could limit these things. The older your female dog gets, without being spared, the higher her chances of getting mammary cancer. Mm. And then we have to do a, a radical mastectomy, just like we, we would do with you. Right. Or the longer your dog stays in, if male dog stays intact, the more prone he is to prostate cancer. Prostate cancer leads to bone cancer, right? And cancer cells in those type of organs can spread anywhere in the body. Oh, let me, let me stop you there, sir. The fact that um, I think I need about four or five now, right? Mm -hmm. And he's never, you know, had a 
Like, See, that's a Caribbean that, thing now. Is that a, um, I don't want to fix him. Help? I want him. I want him to get some before he dies. Can, can we just let see, him be see, a man? See your face. Let me just let him be let, a man, please. Okay. At let, least me, let me ask you something. Let me ask you. Do you understand the pros of your husband getting a vasectomy? Well, of course. Does, from my, from, but but you can go to him and say, hey, the honey, I yeah, want you to get a vasectomy. No, exactly. No. That's 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 machismo, right? That's all that is. That's exactly what you're talking about with your dog. But let's, that's all that is. I'm sure if he had a choice, he was a rough, rough. Give me, let me get some before I go. Okay, rough, rough, okay, right. right. But, <laughs> but okay. we 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 know vasectomies technically are reversible, also. Mm -hmm. And women are pushing for us to get vasectomies, right? Because okay. because they're the only one who have to deal with taking birth control. The responsibility is on them most of the time, right? Agreed. Speaking personally, I'm the one pushing to get one. Um, no, I, I don't uh, agree, but go ahead. No, go what ahead. I'm saying is okay, think about this. Is even if no, 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 let's, let's stay focused. Let's stay on in Alien. Let's let's talk mm. about is it is it is it a health risk, honestly, if you it, do not allow your it dog can become a health risk in that the older an intact animal, when I say intact. There's a female that has a, a uterus and ovaries and a male that has his testicles. The longer they stay with those organs intact, mm -hmm. the more prone they are to reproductive cancers. I need to see you tomorrow. Huh? Let me see you tomorrow. No, no, no. I, I mean, mean, let me just make sure. Uh, and obviously, obviously something simple as timing yeah. for, for when to do these procedures mm -hmm. because those, the ovaries and the testicles are, mm -hmm. have home, have produce hormones right so we have to also time it right how do you do that we have we know that with large breed dogs male dogs you should probably wait until they're 18 months old okay. two years because when you take away that testosterone now that leaves them prone to hip issues and bone issues mm -hmm. right however in a situation where we're just trying to reduce population age really is yeah, a minor thing mm -hmm. compared to having 30,000 strays versus 10. What about a dog who is, like I said, four or five years of age? Uh, is it too late? Or it, it also depends on the breed of dog, too, because I've seen test, I've seen prostate cancer mm -hmm. and prostate enlargement. I have a, I have a, I have an English bulldog right now that is having cyclical enlargement of the prostate i've treated it several times now for me to go now and decide i'm gonna do a biopsy and see if it's cancer and then i would have to neuter him now technically if it was my dog and his prostate keeps on getting enlargement i would neuter him anyway and but it's not my dog yeah. i i just have to give you the pros and cons of the situation right, right? so the problem yeah. is now when you get an enlarged prostate it's uncomfortable uh, it's painful. You're standing up trying to urinate for 30 minutes. Blood is coming out. You get worried, right? Are there any um, psychological benefits? I got the show. Go ahead. I, I, I got, I <laughs> go got ahead. curious. Go, go. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm go ahead. But go. I like, are there any like psychological benefits or deficits to getting your dog? In my personal experience, for me, yeah. the answer is no. However, people have seen in their... Mm -hmm world lack of a decrease in aggression mm. right and i said my experience i had a situation where okay. i had about hold on um hmm? beats is taking over my show and now he's telling me oh you have 10 minutes left who've been talking more go ahead wow. I, I had a situation where i had about nine pit bulls at one time wow i was in school they were always fighting. This was 20 years ago, mm -hmm. right? More than 20 years ago. And they kept on fighting. The veterinarian at the time told my father to spay and neuter them. Yeah. That should help. It did we nothing. Some of the we did. We, he, he spayed and neutered all of them because he was tired of paying for dog fight visits. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and he loved these dogs, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't change anything. Because psychologically, they were already, they don't like 
some of them don't like each, each other. other. We used to put them in the yard on shifts. Mm. Six in the morning to 12, 12 to six, and then six to overnight. We used to have them in shifts because mm -hmm. certain, some of them couldn't be with each yeah, other. Yeah. They would just fight, 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 fight. So when I tell, when I tell people, I spay a neuter for population control and health moving forward, mm -hmm. right? Because it's hard to now put a 13, 15 year old dog on the table for a radical mastectomy because it was never spared. So is that 13 or 15 year old dog already have some inherent heart issues yeah. and anesthesia is always a risk, right? So it's scary, right? So I, my clients who trust me will spay a noodle when I tell them to, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to breed, your, I have responsible clients who would breed dogs and give to their family members or you know, I have a client, she kept two of the last four puppies. Mm -hmm. And if if they sleep past their normal waking up time, she want me to check them out, something wrong, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right? Mm -hmm. so, so it's, I mean, mm -hmm. but for, 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 to be responsible, that comes with making sure they're healthy. And making sure they're healthy is, and I can be very, I don't know. Everybody stop taking advice from non-veterinarians, please. Stop, just stop because it only causes us a problem yeah. when you go and do what some lay person say and then two weeks later they you know, come back to you yeah and then it, ca it, it it causes me and you a problem and then they blame you yeah oh well we're so used to that oh yeah because i've read we, some stuff we are so and i mean used... not you you i mean no you yeah we are we are we, we are basically yeah. immune to that yeah. now because what has happened over the last 10 15 years also is we have opened up our lines of communication between us. Mm -hmm. Because so if Krishan goes to wherever, and then she comes to me, and then she goes back to them, we will share that information. We yeah. can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. We, we have to. We have to because even if it's just to get medical records, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's important. If you go to a new doctor, they ask these simple questions. Mm -hmm. Hey, when was the last time you've been to a doctor? What was found? Where's your blood work? Especially if it's something that they need to do or repeat again yeah. or not. Yeah. And it's the same thing with your animal, right? Because people will misrepresent certain things. Yeah. And it happens every day. So we kind of, you have to be very, this, this, this career is not for the weak no. at all. At all. And with the invention of Facebook, it's very easy to sit on a computer and tell half a story and put Dr. Smith name or you know, on it and say this is what he did and then uh, I've had I've seen it I've seen it many a times where people say oh he did this and he did that and I'm like I never even see this dog what are you talking about yeah people get a little touchy when it comes to that and that's fine um and we understand emotion right because we have to deal we deal with it right most of most of my colleagues have been in your position many times we've been animal owners yeah We've had dogs with cancer. We've had dogs with 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 problems that we couldn't necessarily fix. Mm -hmm. I had a dog. She was 17. She had cancer. She was 38 pounds when I came home. She was normally a 75 pound dog, but she had cancer to spleen. And I was honestly, I didn't want to let her go. I took out her spleen. I did chemo. Ordered a bunch of drugs, right? And it was. It can be labeled inhumane how long I kept her alive because I just didn't want to let her go, right? Yeah. But, hey, so we understand. We take it and we ride with it. As we wrap up, um, we want to talk just briefly about what we can do to prevent certain diseases, you know, at home. Um, we know this, but of course, we want okay. to remind others about, you know, um, the care with food, mm -hmm. choosing the various foods for our pets, and then of course, hot guard and okay. whatever else that is needed. So obviously, um, vaccinations, right? Um, yearly screening for heartworms and tick disease. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you might think you're the best, because this it has to be given every thirty days, and nothing is a hundred percent. I've Animals have missed dosages that you don't even know about. Like, I've seen animals poop out a whole heart guard pill. 
They didn't chew it up. They swallow it. And then yeah. it pooped like two hours later. So, them, so they didn't get it. Yeah. You might give it to your dog and let him go outside, run around, and he might poop it out. You never know. Mm. Obviously, we have ticks and fleas. So getting them checked for tick diseases mm -hmm. is super important. The those those diseases can be absolutely devastating mm -hmm. depending on the quality of the infection, right? Um, food. Uh, I am again a purist. I believe in foods that have veterinary nutritionists mm -hmm. on staff. I don't want to call any brands, but you can you can easily find this information out, right? Yeah. Does this company have veterinary nutritionists on mm -hmm. staff? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into that debate about food because, you know, um, I will say because I'm passionate about it. Yeah. There's a, there are certain diets, grain-free foods, right? They were supposed to be, they were made for quote unquote allergies. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of skin issues, um, but Grain free diets are linked to early onset heart failure. So, if your bag has grain free on it, it's probably a good idea not to use it. Mm. And the data is out there. People don't want to accept it, but there's a whole Facebook group on it. It's called Dilated Cardio, Nutritional Dilated Cardiomyopathy. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I say, I tend to want to deal with foods that um, have. From companies that have veterinary nutritionists on it. What about the? I mean, I started this raw thing for like two days, and I've been like the same for me. This is too much. I have three kids, a whole husband. <sighs> you you want to get fish, me in so much cichlids. trouble? I have a cat. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan. Right? I'm not the biggest fan. I understand the pros and the cons. Mm -hmm. I'm not a. I'm not the biggest fan. Right? Let's talk about the health risk then. Since you don't want to, do you want to elaborate that? Some... Commercial, commercially, commercially approved raw diets. Okay, fine. Right. I tend to not think that any food is co absolutely complete nutritionally. Right. And obviously, there are foods for different stages of life. Yeah. Right. Um, and different sizes. You 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 see in small breed formula. You see in large breed formula. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. um, again, the, I'm I'm in the middle when it comes to the raw food diet trend. Come, let's talk pros no, and cons. No, I I've seen a lot of raw feeding animals that wasn't technically raw food. Right. Oh. I just went to the grocery store, pick up some chicken, wash it off, and give it to the dog. That's not cool. No, I mean, right? when you do I've the seen rice, a lot of this. You, put, yeah, you do yeah. the rice and the egg and the meat. And okay, the, cool. And the but corn I, when and I'm the talking about the meat, right? Broccoli. And I've seen a lot of this. I think from what I've seen, because I kind of a little bit off social media and the yeah, dog yeah. stuff, right? Because I don't want to get involved. I don't yeah, want to yeah. offer my opinion no more. I get it. But I've, I think the raw feeding diet family of people i think it has progressed a little better mm -hmm. over the last five six years right but like i say i don't know i'm not gonna feed my dog raw food but i might have a i might have somebody who does right man you 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 a politician eh? you, yeah i have to this this guy in public i have the, to be very I, okay so let give me a uh an example of a good meal that's say you're doing wrong. Let me, this, it, okay, let me, let me, let me say this. Let, let me, me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. You've never seen a recall of Perino Pro Plan. Okay. I don't lose and call names. I just so did. Don't, don't I just did. Show. But I'm getting. Um, and they don't make grain free. And they make foods for. Every type but of situation. But off names, right? Because right? this is this. Is no, I'm not. Call, I'm not calling no one. Let me call, the name, let me call only... the name that I use. Uh -huh. Just a little bit. And why? Why way, is she doing this? Way, that way, I can get the person who has, mm -hmm. you know, the person who bring mm -hmm. them over to try sponsor the show, mm -hmm. right? Right. What are your thoughts on that? Go read the bag. Man, the truth. Go read the bag. 
So you can get me in trouble. All right, so we leave that alone. Don't get me in trouble. I leave that alone. Go for the go All right, so that, okay, let me tell you my typical. This is when I started just for a couple of days. I started this with Titan, and then I said I can't keep up with it. Mm-hmm. So I'd have like um, either beef or chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, I do the rice. Mm-hmm. I cook the rice, I cook the broccoli, mm-hmm. and I put an egg in there, and I mix mm-hmm. it all up, and I give it to him. Sounds great. Am I missing anything? Not to me. Chicken? You mix it with you mix it with the dry food that you have. No, just I just eat it. Let him eat it raw like that, and that's so, when that was I, earlier. I, I tend to feed my dogs. I don't do them. I can't keep up. A kibble that I like, which will be dry food, and then I do flavor it up with certain things that are good. Egg, yeah. rice, right? But I do it out of proportion where I want them to get eat more of the kibble because mm. the kibble is technically more complete. Do you fry the eggs, boil the eggs? No, just have it raw. raw. Is raw that an issue with salmonella for them? <sighs> So you're saying it's not a good idea. you do not talk. You didn't give me the your hand the up and tell me finish. You per- be quiet. The percentage uh-huh. is small <laughs> with the eggs. Uh-huh. Because technically, How much I have if those, for the most part, if those egg, Negative do you agree okay. that the egg that you buy, okay. let's say you go to Solomon's uh-huh. and you pick up a carton of eggs and you pick up a, a pack of ground beef, which one do you think is more safe or raw? You eat raw, you eat raw ground beef before you eat a, before you swallow a raw egg. I'm asking. No, you, but both you of them would, are, are risky. I, I, okay, I am saying. But I'd rather eat a raw egg before. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. that's all I'm saying. Egg, egg for me. I think egg production, <laughs> egg production is much more safe, safe, safer, safer than. But not safe. Than me. Not safe. I'm not hundred percent. But no. I would swallow a raw egg mm. before I take a spoonful. Of raw, raw brown meat. beef. Yeah, I got you. Ooh, ooh. remember <laughs> beets? You remember when we used to feed brownie them um, boons? Yeah, you know we can't give. You know we can't give dogs boons. Let's get them. Let's, get them. let's talk. Let's talk. Two seconds. Say on Facebook. Okay, okay. <laughs> We say this. Brownie was eating bones, and he never choked in his life. We say this. That's the calcium. Okay. We say this with humans also, right? We think the generation behind us has gotten softer. I think y'all are much more softer than I am. I'm well, I'm 20 years older now than you guys. Right? I think y'all are much. How old are you? Oh, they look. 30? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, for real. Yeah. You're 30? Yeah. Exactly. How old are you? I'm not saying that on there. You're 35? Um, what do you mean? I thought it was a transparent show. I am not that transparent. See, so you're 30. I am, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm 39. I'll be okay. 40 this year. Right. See? I'm 10 years older and I'm 19 years older than you. Wow. I could be a father. Listen, you gotta tell us what you're doing. Black don't crack. Oh, okay. Yeah, for Go real. Ahead. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's the raw egg. That's a raw egg. <laughs> no, I don't uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that's saying it. if I had to uh, pick, I would pick the egg. Yeah. I drink I I did that one time. Never again. Never again. Mm-hmm. Um I can't even watch that scene in Rocky. Mm-hmm. I think the more modern we get, that comes with its right? Yeah. For instance, children. Are not as active as we used to be. Yeah. Right? Children don't play in the dirt as much as we used to. Yeah. Right? Children know, you know, so they're not necessarily as healthy as we used to be. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing with the animals. They become very more modernized. Mm-hmm. And that might open up a little bit more space for them to be a little more prone to being affected by a lot of things, yeah. right? Some no basic, no basic immune system and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. And I always said to, said to people, growing up, my, gran- my grandmother had a lot of animals in the yard. Sometimes, some of them dogs would go missing. Mm-hmm. Now, did they eat some of them bones she gave her and choke to death? I don't know. Because they go in the bush don't come and back. you don't see them no mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. Right? Or uh, did they mm-hmm. have a dog fight and bleed out somewhere? Who knows? All I know is we had a constant replacement of mm-hmm. animals that I was always around animals because of her. Mm-hmm. I see a question coming in from the live. Someone is saying, why is it that you see the dogs eating the bush? 
Oh, why is that's that? Madison, eh? That's the Madison. Why? <laughs> that's what I. That's what I. That's what I. I mean, let him talk. Go ahead. Um, some dogs, some some dogs will eat grass because it scratches their throat. Okay. Some dogs will eat bush because technically they know some bushes that might have some healing properties. Oh. And this crazy talking, the same Dr. Smith. Okay. okay. Some dogs okay, okay. will eat bush because it might have some cleansing properties and different things going on. Um, obviously, as a trained medical professional, mm -hmm. I tend to think something is wrong when no. they're doing that not necessarily right yeah. right and um i try to mix in some holistic stuff here and there mm -hmm. but by virtue of being a licensed professional i have to follow certain guidelines mm -hmm. right i do not knock naturalistic or holistic medicine and like i tell some of my friends who are into that just even like a chiropractor for say, for, mm -hmm. for, for instance, they're not they're not too keen on just jumping on anti-inflammatories yes. and taking Tylenol and yeah. stuff like that. But I always said to them, we need to find a healthy mixture of both. Yeah. Because I have a slip disc problem, and if I left a I had a problem in October where it popped, and I couldn't even walk, went to the chiropractor, but you know I took it upon myself to add some stuff to help with the inflammation mm -hmm. because the ice pack and stuff wasn't, working. wasn't well, it was working yeah. but i needed more relief I right i needed more relief to I, sleep I, I to turn sorry. everything yeah. so i think we should find a good balance like i'm never going to feed my dog complete raw right i'll probably mix it with some kib with with some kibble Right. Right. That I think is nutritionally so as, beneficial. Right. So as we wrap up now, I mean, I, keep, I don't know who's talking more, but one try to do this. Like I understand sign language. Mm. I'm not going to go there. All right. So we're going to wrap up. Um, but is, is there anything that you would want the listeners to know um, regarding, you know, the proper care or maybe because we, we talk about nutrition. We talk about responsible breeding. Um, we talk about the importance of vaccinations. We talk about using medications such as hot cards, etc. Is there anything else that we may have um, missed that you want to? Um, I will. I will, I will. I am. I will put my head on a chopping block to say that all veterinarians will try to lead you in the right way, right. especially. But then that right way changes depending on their experiences. Mm -hmm. The age of the internet has dictated certain things to us, mm -hmm. but information that you find on the internet, you should be able to find a veterinarian to say yay or nay to and why, right. right? I will not just tell you this is what we should do and why, mm -hmm. because you could find information on the internet that doesn't appeal to the environment, mm -hmm. right? I get it. Because so, there's some vaccines, I have friends in the States Vets in the states they don't vaccinate for certain things that we have to vaccinate right, for here right. right i have vets in the states who i had a dog that had a particular type of tick disease the lady took it away it got all kind of things and then once they figured out what it was they sent it back to me to treat because they don't treat so they don't see it so they don't treat it right it's not typical right over there. Um, I'm in a group on Facebook with 8,000 vets. I don't. I know probably 20 of them right. personally, but we talk about cases, no judgment zone. Mm -hmm. And I've had people reach out to me from Africa, Australia, and Detroit when they have a, like a parvo outbreak. Mm -hmm. I've had friends say, hey, crazy, I need a help with some skin. And vice versa, mm -hmm. right? Because I would say, hey, what drug you use for this, right? Because I have drug for every socioeconomic class of people they are right right um because some of these drugs i don't even want to buy right <laughs> right mm -hmm. but i have to depending on the situation right. you know um would you want me to give your dog tell you simple stuff like i can give your dog an injection now 
and again in two weeks, or you could just give these pills twice a day for the next 30 days. Right. But obviously that comes with cost and different right. things. But I, I would say one of the things that we want to do for the health of your animal is have a vet or find a vet that you trust. Yeah. Right? And even though you go and read up on things, find a situation where you can have a particular relationship so they can explain to you why they didn't do it this way mm -hmm. and why they're doing it this way. Mm -hmm. Because what I use for a simple kennel cough might not be what Dr. Sands used or Dr. Allen used or Dr. Johnson used. Mm -hmm. or because we have different experiences with different drugs. Right. right? Um, so that comes with That's interesting. what happens in my experience. I'm not going to throw your dog have a UTI. I might not always say, hey, just take this augmented. Mm -hmm. I might use something else, mm -hmm. right? Somebody might use something else as a first line, but it's all the same. They all have, they all under the umbrella of stuff that we can use. Right. So it's, it's, it's a, and I don't want to say personal because I don't want, you know, they as well WhatsApp you. One thirty in the morning, I call you say a dog scratching, which is not right. an emergency, but right. it is what it is. <laughs> but um, the health of your animal is dependent on the information you're getting, and the environment the animal is in, and the breed of that animal also, mm -hmm. and the type of animal, mm -hmm. right? See, like you just told me, oh, I thought it was three vaccines. Mm. Mm. It depends on who you ask, mm. right? It really depends on who you ask, but it is what it is, right? It is what it is. I will I will never encourage you to do just three vaccines, right? right? And sometimes people get annoyed that they have to come back because sometimes I split up my vaccines, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to give Milo the same vaccines I give to a five-pound dog, mm -hmm. even though they might be the same age. I might split up some of those vaccines mm -hmm. because one of the problems you have with is over-vaccination. That must... Over-vaccination is not just, oh, I can give six vaccines. Mm -hmm. Over-vaccination might be given that combo at a time when the body can't handle it. Because right. we have four and one vaccines, we have six and one vaccines, we have eight and one vaccines. So I might separate them depending on the size and the breed of the dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I am. Could you write it down for me? because I, I can't understand what you're saying. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Quasi, for just your time. Not a problem. You know, your time, your, the information, the insight. We've gathered. We've got a lot. I learned a lot. Beats learn a lot. A lot. Um, and when you do come back, it's coming back. We, <laughs> you never really told, you never really answered the question was the most exotic animal that you've uh, ever practiced on. You, you, you can you recall exotic to me i seen i never saw it before until i got to vet school hmm. i never even saw it on tv there's something called on a goatee it looks like a rat but it's big like a pig they have them in trinidad and these are pets or no are just they was in the, they was in the zoo and they were wild okay like happy bar Something like I, I don't want to say that can't be wrong, but they have a rat face, but they have a body of a big old pig. Oh, I see one of them out west. Where? Here? Yeah, yeah, right in Gable Beach. You think we have any over there? I don't know what you. Anyway, let's not go. I've never now. seen any. I've never seen. That any. might not be exotic to other people, because I have is... friends who have seen much more exotic animals. Yeah. Obviously, I've been. The man is in school. They have a zoo. Right. So I've seen the. Elephant, I've seen the monkeys that you have practiced I, on. That you have... practice, as in, I'll tell you a oh, story. Okay, I'll tell you a story. We went as vet students to the zoo in Trinidad to do teeth cleaning on some lions. Mm. I refused, I did not go inside there. Because I have a name for you, but I'm not going to no, call I, it on air. They, they were sedated, but I still, I don't. I was sedated. Yeah, like you know, I have I have people want me. I have I have a friend want me to go dive in. I don't want to dive with no sharks. No. I don't. <laughs> but I, you're a veterinarian. I, 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 that's okay. I'm a human too. Aww. I don't want to dive with sharks. I don't. Let me ask you one of the questions. When this is one of the first questions I asked Doctor Sands, how many times have you been bitten 
I'm a dog. All a lot. <laughs> a lot. Kicked by horse, kicked by cow. Mm. A lot. But but you're not afraid to deal with that. No, no. It's just if you're in this profession and you think you're not gonna get bitten, or you're not gonna get peed on or pooped on, yeah, then you're not really mm-hmm. you're not really in this profession. Mm-hmm. A cat is gonna get you. Yeah. Yeah. A cat is gonna get you. There might be a dog that snaps. That's why we have muzzles, we yeah. have leash things. It might look sometimes owners don't want that for their animals, but we have to protect ourselves yeah, also. Absolutely. And even like knowing certain breeds of dogs, right? I don't trust certain breeds of dog because I know when they're in a that comfortable environment. No, not temperament, an uncomfortable environment, a, a foreign environment, mm-hmm. right? If you take your dog to the vet clinic and you're sitting in the waiting room and there are three and four other dogs there, they are sensing out each other. Mm-hmm. That could be a threatening space for a dog, mm-hmm. right? And then you just have some dogs with. I have, I have several dogs with anger issues, oh, right? Um, one of my clients just asked me to put a dog on Prozac. Um, yeah, we do put animals on Xanax and Prozac what, and stuff like what, that. What yes. issues does dog have? What, what, he is very, issues? he like if, if they pick up his bowl of food he's and he's not food? ready, he'll bite at them, right? He has, he's been like this when he was a puppy, right? Oh, anger. He needs therapy. Yes. He has anger issues. He needs, he he needs some Xanax. He needs some Xanax or some Ritalin. <laughs> but we do give those things to animals. Mm-hmm. There, are, there, are, there, are, there are very few drugs that we don't give to animals that we can give to you. Mm-hmm. Right? Simple. I mean, it's just knowing the dosages. The dosages. Right. right. Um, we'll be here all day. Okay. But we yeah. won't do that. We ain't be here all day. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I want to shoot all here on live TV now. We, let, let's go. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. And once again, where can we find you? For the well, who are hearing and my clinic, for the first time. My clinic is on Marathon Road, directly opposite City Lumberyard, number nine, Marathon Road, and south of Star General Insurance. Inside the, that's the number for us. Uh, telephone number is 393-0197. The email is mvcpets at gmail. That's Marathon Veterinary Clinic, mvcpets at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah. And you don't want, do you have any handles? Social media handles? No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just asking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So thank you I so think much. Marathon Veterinary Clinic is on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in to your lane talk show. Uh, next week is May. And you know, May is synonymous with Mother's Day. Dun, dun, dun. But just before we get into that, I want to be sensitive to women experiencing infertility challenges, of course. We will have with us Dr. Latazia Stewart, also known as, as Dr. Taz, um, share with us her journey with infertility and how she overcame um, and how, you know, we want to deal with persons who may be experiencing the same thing. Um, and so we're going to have the topic managing infertility. So that will be our next show. Um, today's show is brought to you by Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John Shoe Store and Accessories, Family Medicine Center, Your Lane Life Coaching, and Bahama Odds and Ends. Oh, how could I forget? Emmanuel Medical Clinic. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. I pray that you were all empowered, educated, or encouraged today in some way, even with learning how to cater and care for our pets, our fur ber- ba- babies, our fur babies. What do you call your pets? You say for a baby? No, I had I had a doctor on the show who said I'm also the father of, and he named two of his dogs. Yeah, we, we yeah. Mm-hmm. So and that's just how it is with us. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a blessed Sunday. Peace. <laughs>